Adventurous Albion Online can be a confusing game, but it does not need to be like that. How come, wizard? Well, because that is where our channel comes in. I want to provide the information that the tutorial does not provide in a series of videos in which I'm going to be explaining the different types of content that Albion Online has. Today, adventurers, we're going to be focusing on the mists. I'm going to show you all the information that you need to know, including some secret things. Did you know there is a hidden city located within the mists? Did you know that you can find amazing bosses that are incredibly rare, but they do have a spawn pattern that some people are speculating? Or did you know there is an entire solo static in the mists that not a lot of people are aware of? Now, adventurers, since this is going to be somewhat of a longer video, feel free to check the timestamps down below to search for the part that you're most interested in. Travelers, if you are a new player and I've just sparked your interest, why don't you take a seat in the milking and grab yourself your favorite potion so that we can begin. First of all, adventurers, what are the mists? Well, whenever you start roaming in the open world, in any zone that is not a blue zone, you're gonna be noticing those little things right here that are moving around. And whenever you step close to those things, you're gonna notice how they behave. They start running away from you and ultimately they disappear within a portal. But you can actually enter through this portal yourself. Now, adventurers, those, what you've just witnessed is a will-o'-wisp. A will-o'-wisp opens up the gate towards the mists. Now, mists come in two different sizes. The duo mist, which is the one that you've just witnessed right there, which is uh, characterized by the fact that it's called the greater wisp and it's also bigger than the small counterpart. And this, my dear adventurer, is how the solo mist looks like. As you can see, it does not have the name greater in the name and it behaves in the same exact way as you can see runs away and then teleports away in a portal that you can also enter yourself now adventurous mists also have two different difficulties those difficulties are lethal and non-lethal lethal mists can be found in red zones and black zones they are the same type of mist regardless if you enter from a red zone or a black zone and non-lethal mist can be found anywhere in the yellow zones and on top of that each and every single type of mist also has different rarities similar to how chests have different rarities there is a common mist an uncommon mist a rare mist an epic mist and a legendary mist Chances are if you enter a common mist in the black zone, it's going to be the lowest tier, which in the black zone would be tier 6, in the yellow zone would be tier 5. However, if you enter a legendary, it is always going to be a tier 8 mist. Unless you enter from the yellow zone, in which case the maximum tier is tier 7. To enter the mist adventures, there is no IP requirement, you just have to pop the mist and go in. Much like this right here. And of course, in case you are just as unlucky as I am, you might have to clear some mobs before you can actually enter. And let us see what happens once you enter the mist. Now, my dear adventurer, once you get yourself into the mists, the first thing that you're going to be notice is the peculiar map. Allow me to explain what this actually tells, because this map actually tells a story. The stories of some long lost civilizations. And you can see those remnants right over here. Those are called the mist camps. They're not marked on the map initially, but once you discover them, they're going to remain marked on the map. Let me show you what I mean. This is how the camp looks like whenever you discover it. And again, you can even make sense of where the camps are by simply seeing those monster made structures on the map. Like you look at the map over there, there's nothing apparent over there. But if you look at it over here, it's clear that there's a structure. When you approach those structures, if it's a camp indeed, it's gonna be marked on the map. And from this point onward, you can go to the other side of the map, the camp itself will remain marked. Now, there are a lot of different tips and tricks that you can use to clear a camp faster, but the one that I would want to let you know the most, because it's the most meaningful one, is don't fight mobs inside of the camp. Because that's not gonna give you a lot of fame. Because yes, you need fame to actually unlock the camp. Fight mobs outside of the camp. The mobs that are located inside of the camp have reduced fame and reduced silver drops. So by simply taking a mob from outside of the camp and fighting it, you are making sure that you're clearing the camp as fast as possible. However, don't sweat too much over this, as you're most likely still gonna have to clear some mobs. Now, to address the elephant in the room, why do you wanna clear those camps? Well, because in the center of the camp, there is a chest. A chest that you can see the size of even before opening it. Now, adventurers, there are two types of chests. A small one and a large one. The small chest will give you less loot than the large one, but they can all give you more than decent loot. An interesting thing, however, is the rarity. Those chests can be whatever rarity. They range from green all the way up to legendary. However, the green chest has a 0% chance to drop any loot. It will only drop tomes. So keep that in mind. If you see a green chest, do not expect it to be a lucky green chest because as I just said, 
it's only gonna be tomes. A blue chest and above can contain whatever, including always tomes. Something to note when it comes to those chests is that, uh, all things considered, they are viewed as instanced. What do I mean by that? If a normal chest could be opened by me, and then a player could come by, kill me, and steal my chest, well, those chests don't work like that. The loot that I have inside of this chest is only my loot. If somebody was right next to me right now and would open the same exact chest, the chest for him could be a purple chest, while for me it's just a common green chest. Even if you're playing with an ally in duo mist, the chest that you're doing will differ depending on which person opens it. It's totally randomized, but I just want to let you know that let's say you are clearing a camp and a sweat lord appears and tries to steal the camp from you, they cannot do that. So simply by disengaging and coming back later to open your chest, you're gonna have every single thing right there. Nobody can steal your chest. And by the way, this is how a medium cash looks like. I call it large cash along with everybody else uh but yeah this is the the large cash that we're talking about and as you can see in this situation is blue so it's going to contain loot but also tomes the loot is totally randomized with the most stable silver actually coming from blue caches like you don't get as much silver from rare caches as you do from uh, those things now adventurers another thing that i need to let you know is the fact that the size of the chest is not random a big camp will always have a medium cache a small camp will always have a small cache. Adventures, another landmark pretty much that you're going to be seeing on the map besides the camps and besides the resource hotspots, which I did not explain because they're quite self-explanatory, there is this portal right here. This looks like a roads portal, but if you hover over it, you're going to notice that it says unstable road portal. There's a roads portal that can lead you anywhere. Upon clicking it, there's no going back. Now, it shows you what map it's uh, going to lead into the closer you get to it. So in our situation, Stone Mount Sun Bluff. I totally botched that name, but it's this map right here. So as you can see, even though I've entered somewhere in Matlock, this is the map in which I've entered the mist right next to the portal, as you can see, I get teleported all the way over to the other side of the continent, pretty much. The first thing that you're going to be encountering a lot in the mists, even before you get yourself to the first camp, are going to be those little small camps, if you want. It's essentially a pack of mobs that are protecting a caged wisp. Upon you freeing this caged wisp, you're going to receive fame, but also something interesting. That right there. If you don't know what that right there is, I don't blame you travelers, the game does not really explain it to you. That is Brazilian standing. You see, the mists are under the control of a mythical city called Brasilia. And you need a certain Brazilian standing to be able to discover that long lost city. You need more specifically 50k Brazilian standing. Freeing up those caged wisps and doing the camps are gonna be the two best things that you can do for farming up Brazilian standing. I will show you what you can do with this Brazilian standing later down the line. Now, adventurers, the other objective that shows up in the mist is a major objective are the turbulent mists. Don't worry, I will explain what that is as well. The turbulent wisp is a portal that shows up on the whole map. Uh, that has a timer. At the end of the timer, there's gonna be a mist, a little wisp that pops out. Okay, this guy might want to fight me, so I need to be aware of that. Once you pick up this mist, you're not gonna be able to mount up. The uh, button on which you normally mount up, it's the button on which you actually drop this. So you're locked from mounting up, unless you drop it and then start mounting up. That's the only way you can mount up right now, but you don't really want to mount up with this. What you want to do with this is deliver it to that point right there. That's a spot only visible to you. Nobody else can view it unless there's somebody right next to it. Whenever you start approaching it, there's going to be a portal that opens up. They can see the portal, but the marking on the map, you are the only one that can see it. However, there is something else that you have to keep track of, and that is invisibility. You can use whatever spell you want, but using an invisibility spell will cause you to automatically drop this. The invisibility spell that I've used, in case you're confused, is the innate invisibility of the Shadow Panther. So whatever invisibility you use will make this drop and will make this appear on the map. While you are carrying it, nobody can see it. However, if you drop it, the icon appears on the map right there, telling the rarity and the exact location of the Will-O-Wisp. Now, adventures, once you reach the designated location, you want to click it and essentially you have successfully escorted the... A wounded wisp that's kind of the fantasy behind it and if you pay attention there is a city that appears over there that my friends is the city of brazilian this is one of the best ways to farm brazilian standing it's somewhat unstable since you need to have pretty good gear to be able to compete for the turbulent wisp which is why i'm recommending freeing those caged wisps as an alternative 
But if you can uh, afford risking it a little bit, or if you can afford risking some more silver into your build so that you can afford farming those weakened wisps, this is gonna unlock Brazilian the fastest. Now, adventurers, another objective that will appear in the map is this right here. This is a coffer. The coffer is a treasure chest that appears, unfortunately, I'm not really gonna be able to show you, uh, but it's a treasure chest that appears randomly throughout the mist. This coffer appears only if you get close enough to it. Similarly to how the spider only shows up on the map if you get close enough to it. Now, adventurers, another mist objective is the spider, which appears on the map whenever you get close to it. As you can see, this is kind of the distance. You can imagine a circle around it. As long as you are in this circle, the spider will appear. It does not appear for anybody else outside of the circle, no matter if you attack it or not. Even if I attack it and get out of the circle, the spider will disappear, as you will see in a second. Now, adventurers, in case you are new and you've never fought a spider before in the mist, yes, you can solo those. They're very similar to the ones in the open world in terms of mechanics, but they deal much less damage and they have much less HP. To solo this, you just want to be mindful of this little jump attack that the spider does. That is the only thing that does a lot of damage to you. Uh, that attack happens every four attacks or after every special attack such as that big circle right there. As long as you keep yourself moving, you should be fine. Another jump attack is coming in right now. Again, ping can also mess you up in this situation, but for the most part, you should be fine. Now, that was a special attack. What follows up is a jump attack, which you may or may not be able to dodge if ping is on your side, unfortunately, adventurers. Again, I'm still playing on the West server. I cannot wait to fully move on the European server, but uh, doesn't happen right now, travelers. You can easily solo this even with a tier 3 set, it's just gonna take up to a couple of minutes. Another small objective that can appear, and I would say this is one of the biggest objectives among the small ones, is actually the Nightfall Abbey. And uh, we have to take a little bit of time to actually explain this. Now once you decide to zone into the Nightfall Abbey, you're gonna notice that there's a specific map. There's a whole entire zone uh, that is very much its own thing. I could make a dedicated video to the Nightfall Abbey itself, but I think I can condense the information and just tell you everything you need to know about it in this one video right here. So first of all, let us explain the divisions of the map. You're gonna notice that the map itself is a square, a tilted square. I'm not sure exactly how that shape is called in English. This square is divided into nine parts. I want you to imagine some lines that are just dividing those parts just like this. So there is a square over here, square over here, over here, over here, over here and so on and so forth. Now, in the middle of those squares, there is always gonna be a boss. That boss might either protect a chest uh, or that boss might either protect two shrines. Now, just to pinpoint the exact locations, there is a boss over there, the boss over there, a boss over here, a boss over there, over there, over there, over there, this is the only one that's kind of an exception, over there and over here. And again, those bosses can either protect a chest or two shrines. Now that I've brought shrines up, allow me to explain what those shrines actually are. Well, essentially, all of those rooms that you've seen on the map will be rooms occupied by monsters. Uh, those monsters are always gonna be the same, they're always gonna be in the same exact layout. The only thing that might change is that sometimes there is a chance of a random boss uh, protecting a chest to spawn instead of any of those camps. In that situation, instead of the whole uh, layout of the mobs, you have just one boss protecting a chest. But for the most part, you're gonna be getting the mobs protecting a shrine. Once you kill those mobs protecting a shrine, the shrine itself will open up. Now, when it comes to opening the shrine, there is a 10% chance that you are just as lucky as I am and you get a chest. This chest uh, works like any other chest. It can contain anything, regardless if it's green, blue, yellow, or whatever. However, for the most part, you're not going to be getting chests, you're going to be getting buffs. And allow me to explain to you those buffs. One of the buffs is the red buff. The red buff has a very simple effect. Once you drop below a certain HP threshold, it starts healing you. Now, while this buff has a specific effect, which you can see right over here, there is also a universal effect that every single buff has. This effect right here, the active effect if you want, like the effect that actually heals you, this cannot stack up. However, this can stack up quite a lot. And by stacking this up, you are empowering this buff as well. This essentially increases your damage versus players and your defense versus players as well. On top of that, the more you stack those, read the last paragraph right over there, the total amount heal increases for each stack of Knightly Grace after the first by 1.25%. The Knightly Grace is this right here. When it comes to the buff that you just got, the red buff itself is that right there. The other buff that you want to be mindful of is the Blessing of Valor. This is what we call the blue buff. It increases your max HP by 70% once you drop below a certain threshold. You're gonna notice that all of those buffs activate whenever you drop below a certain threshold. Now, if you have the red buff active and you activate the blue buff, the active part of the buff, quote-unquote, 
will be replaced. So right now you no longer heal from the other buff, you are just uh, increasing your max HP once you drop below a certain threshold. However, the other thing, the Nightly Grace itself, as you can see, it did not get replaced, it actually started stacking up. And similarly to the red buff, uh, this active buff also essentially interacts with those nightly, uh, nightly grace stacks. So the more stacks you have, the more powerful buffs you're gonna get. And the last buff that you wanna be mindful of is the yellow buff right here. This increases your movement speed by 35% and damage by 7% for 5 seconds once your HP drops a certain threshold. And similarly to all other buffs that I showcased so far, once you take this, it will replace whatever buff you have. The replacement of the buff only happens whenever you're moving from one buff to the other. If, for example, I right now just go and pick another yellow buff, that is not gonna replace my buff. It's not gonna stack it either. The only thing that stacks is this right here. Now, adventurers, a little bit earlier, we talked about the boss room. This is how the boss room looks like. So if any other room has a bunch of mobs that are protecting one shrine, the boss room has two of those shrines. And it also has a chance to have one boss, just one mob, protecting a chest. The chest that can be any color. Generally, however, it ends up being a green chest. So keep that in mind and don't get your hopes too high up. The trick to making money in the Nightfall Abbey is simply trying to do as many chests as you can. Hey, look at that. Look at that. By the way, just as an extra tip, the most consistent money makers so far have been the blue chests. And again, I'm doing all of this without premium. Uh, I mean, it just happened that I don't have premium because again, I'm doing a hardcore run on my main character and it's somewhat pointless for me to activate premium knowing full well that I'm going to be moving on the European server in less than 10 days. Another thing that you want to be mindful of is this chest right here. This is what uh, makes a lot of people think of the Nightfall Abbey as a battle royale. This is the chest that spawns right before the Nightfall Abbey closes because yes, at some point the Nightfall Abbey will close and I will show you how that looks like as well. This chest appears and it's first of all a sign that hey, if you want to fight, go over there because there might be some people competing for this chest as well and be a sign of the fact that the Nightfall Abbey is about to close. Another thing that can spawn in the Nightfall Abbey are those little treasure coffers right there, those chests right here that I want you to notice first of all how the icon differs. Look at this icon, look at this icon. The biggest difference between them is that the treasure chest, this one right here, appears over the whole map. You can be on that side of the map and still see the treasure chest, similarly to how you see it in the mists themselves. However, this little coffer right there disappears once you gain some distance from it, similarly to how the spider and the nightfall abbey disappears as well. Now as you can see adventurers, this chest has a timer on it, you have to wait for this time to run out and then you're gonna be able to open it. Uh, once the timer runs out, the treasure coffer will also specify what rarity it has. So a common, uncommon, rare, and so on and so forth. Rarity that also shows up on the map itself. So keep that in mind. Now, adventurers, I talked a little bit earlier about the mists closing. What do I mean by that? Well, both the Nightfall Abbey and the mists, after some time, usually around 18 minutes, I think it's a 20 minute timer actually, but you never join the mist right when it opens so for the most part it's going to be around 15 minutes you're going to see this timer right here there's a five minute timer that lets you know that the mists are closing the moment the mist start to close you have two options first of all do nothing in which case you're going to be kicked out of the mist in the same exact location in which you've entered the mists and the second option is try to find another willow wisp which by the way the amount of willow wisp that appear around you right now has increased tremendously so you're going to have a pretty easy time finding those willow wisps try to just listen to the audio cues and you're going to be able to find one just fine now if you find yourself in the nightfall abbey again you can simply go into one of those mists or simply leave a gate if you leave through a gate you're going to appear uh, in a mist. It's a randomized mist and you're not gonna be appearing in the same exact mist in which you've entered the Nightfall Abbey or from which you've entered the Nightfall Abbey. So keep that in mind. Adventurers, one thing to keep in mind is that if you use the exits uh, from those gates that you've seen in the Nightfall Abbey, you will always end up in a common mist. Whereas if you start looking for will o wisp you have a very high chance of finding a rare one, an uncommon one, or whatnot. Now, Adventurers, another thing that is worth mentioning about the Nightfall Abbey is that similar to all other small objectives, it disappears once you get far away from it. But as you can see, the radius of this is quite big. So you're going to be able to see it. Again, imagine a circle around it. You're going to be able to spot it pretty, pretty fast. A very easy way to find those uh, smaller objectives is simply by pressing Shift N if you're on PC or simply dragging and dropping the minimap to the center of the screen if you're on mobile. That will open the travel mode or as I like to call it, the ARPG map. The ARPG map for which you can tweak 
uh, well, a lot of different settings. Now again, tweak this to your own preferences. The way I have it set up is with the travel mode map transparency set to 30%, which is the minimum, and the icon transparency set to 100%. So that way the icons are really popping and it doesn't bother me at all when it comes to simply playing. And as you can see, it is much, much easier to find those objectives. Another thing that you have to keep in mind when it comes to the map of the mist are the type of resources that you're going to be finding. Uh, to the question, what resources can I find in the mist? The answer is quite simple, yes. All of them can be found over here, but for the most part, there are a lot of gatherers that are gathering in the mist because they're much safer, and so this is kind of what you're going to be seeing. What is this guy doing? I will take it, my dear friend. Now, will you take it? <laughs> I don't know what you are thinking. My dear friend, I do not know what you are thinking, but it does not matter anymore. It does not matter anymore. Why did he dismount? I did not want to kill him now. I had no intentions to kill him anymore. I guess, hey, extra tip when it comes to survivability. If you ever come in contact with a mighty wizard, turn your back and run. Don't even look back. The last thing that you want to do is what this guy did right there. One more thing that we didn't touch upon when it comes to the Mist Adventures are the very, very rare objectives. So far, we've discussed the open objectives that you can see on the whole map. We've discussed some rarer objectives that only appear, or smaller objectives that only appear whenever you get close to them. And there are also some very rare objectives. Those rare objectives include fighting the Mist bosses. Now, there are a lot of different names for those mobs. Some people call them Bigfoots. Some people call them uh, Fade Dragons dragons, even though they're not all fey dragons, some people call them fey mobs, whatever you call them, those are bosses in the mists that you're going to be finding randomly. They can only be found in uncommon or above quality mists, and once you kill them, you have a chance of getting the artifact required to craft some pretty good armor pieces. Those armor pieces I'm going to leave on your screen so that you know exactly what you're looking for, and you can find them in the destiny board under any armor line that you can think of. There are three different helmets, three different chest pieces, and three different shoes. Now, adventurers, we talked a lot about Brazilian. What exactly is that? Well, from the moment you manage to reach 50,000 Brazilian standing, which just for reference, by freeing the caged wisps and doing some mob camps, you can easily get that done in two hours with no bonuses around, a new opportunity arises, and that is the city of Brazilian. Now, that city will appear as a portal on your map. That portal on the map can appear in any single mist, no matter the rarity. However, it is most common in yellow zone mists. I'm not sure exactly what the spawn rates are in black zone mists, but in yellow zone mists they appear once every four mists. So by simply going a little bit in yellow mists, you're gonna be able to find the city of Brazilian much, much, much faster. Now adventurers, it took eight tries, this being the eighth try, and surely enough, Brazilian is right over there. This is how Brazilian shows up. Try not to confuse it with the unstable road portal. There's a clear difference, but you know, just be mindful that there are two different types of portals that can appear in the mists. Once you get close to the designated spot on the map, the city of Brazilian opens its gates. And again, you need to make sure that you have 50k Brazilian reputation. If you don't have that, this portal does not show up. Once you click it, congratulations, my dear traveling friend, you've made it! in the mystical city of Brazilian. Now, there is a lot that can be said about the city, so I'll try to make it quick. First of all, this city is a city in layers. Uh, contrary to every other city that has just one map, one layer, this city has three layers. This is the top layer of Brazilian. Let us explore this first. I'm not going to explain the common icons that you usually see, I'm going to explain the special ones. First of all, what is that right there? This is a mist portal. You know how you have to go in the open worlds and look for mists? Well, if you have Brazilian unlocked, you no longer have to do that. You can select the type of mist that you want from over here, and you can simply just go in. The catch is, this is always going to be a common mist. You're never going to find an uncommon or above mist with this right here. On the other end of the map, adventurers, you have an unstable road portal. Now, similarly to the mist portal, this basically makes it so that you don't have to look for roads. Furthermore, this road portal can lead you anywhere. So I can essentially click this and appear in the rarest deep road that nobody has ever been to for the last 10 hours. Or I can click this and be in a road right next to Limers. You never know, that is where the beauty lies. However, once you teleport, well, you can re-teleport back. And last but not least, in the middle of the top layer, you find this NPC right here, for which I need to make myself invisible. This NPC is what sells the different crafting reagents for different capes and also different mounts. 
mounts that you're gonna have to have some uh, Brazilian standing to be able to actually buy and favor. Favor, which is a currency that you can keep track over here, which you're gonna be accumulating quite a lot in the mists themselves. You're also gonna be getting a lot of Conqueror challenge points. So overall, doing mists is one of the best ways to fill this bar up as a solo player. And you get those by doing pretty much anything, with some activities rewarding more, some activities rewarding less. But since I don't want to make this video too long, I will let you discover those activities. The second layer of Brazilian can be accessed over here or over here. This leads you to the bank, this leads you to the market. By going over there, you're gonna notice that uh, there's a stairway, and at the middle of the stairway, you have here the market, and over there the bank. The market in Brazilian, like any other market, is localized. And no, Brazilian does not have a black market. By going further down, you're gonna get to the bottom layer of Brazilian. The bottom layer is what looks more like a normal city. You have all the crafting stations crafted by players and the usual infrastructure that you would normally see in a city. You also have some maps right outside of Brazilian that unfortunately you cannot see on the actual map. You show up as being, well, nowhere to be seen. There's a city outside of our realm. Now those Brazilian maps are right over here, right over there, right over here and right over there. Now, before you enter those maps, considering taking those uh, invisibility buffs. Those are the same exact invisibility buffs that you have at the exits of the black zone portal areas. And by going in those maps, you're gonna notice that there are just normal maps, with the only difference being the fact that they are red zone maps. So keep that in mind. You can very much be killed over here, and whenever you are killed, you lose everything. Same rules that apply to the normal red zone, the only difference being that you have a lot of ways of escaping. So for example, if you are being Ganked, you can go back to Brazilian over there, you can zone in a different map over there, zone back into another map over there, or simply use all of those Brazilian portals uh, to get back in Brazilian. You shouldn't really die here very often, but keep your guard up, Traveler. Now, adventurers, let us address the elephant in the room. Do you have to go through all of those steps to get to Brazilian every single time? Like, go in yellow zone mists, find Brazilian, enter in Brazilian, and so on and so forth? And the answer to that is no. Once you've entered Brazilian for the first time, you can go to the travel panel that is located right over here at the bottom layer of Brazilian and teleport to whatever map you want. In my situation, that map will be Mathlock. Now, once you teleport out, you can absolutely teleport back in. And to teleport back in, you wanna go to any travel planner in whatever city, scroll all the way down, and the last option will always be Brazilian. By teleporting over there, you can teleport with items on you, there's no restriction when it comes to that, like you can see right now, I have items on me, and I can simply just teleport over there, just to show you how you get back to Brazilian. By the way, adventure is something that I forgot to address when it came to Brazilian, and a viewer reminded me of that, and it's actually very useful to know, you can also hold an island in Brazilian, and it has a very, very interesting look around it that I'm gonna let you discover yourself. Now, adventurers, with that said, you know everything there is to know about the mists, except one thing, and that is, what build should you go in with? And specifically for that question, I've made this video right here, showing you not one, not two, but three amazing builds that you can start with on the fresh server, regardless if you want to do mists or whatever other content in the game. So, consider checking it out. 